Severe burns are some of the most complex injuries you can sustain, affecting not only the skin, but also muscles, bones, nerves, and blood vessels. According to the World Health Organization, burns cause an estimated 180,000 deaths every year. Today, the use of antibiotics, topical treatments, and surgeries like skin grafting have greatly improved survival rates for burns. But things weren't always that way. As a 2014 article published in the journal Burns and Trauma put it, the history of burn treatment consists of weird and wonderful topical concoctions in ancient times. So what did ancient burn treatment look like? And how did that treatment evolve to what it is today? Welcome to Learn Something New by NFPA Journal. Ever since humans discovered fire, they've been burned. Neanderthal cave drawings from thousands of years ago depict burns and burn treatments. Some of the first detailed descriptions of burn treatments we have come from ancient Egypt. Papyrus records dating back to 1500 BC suggest ancient Egyptians used many different ingredients to concoct topical treatments for burns. These included ingredients that today have been proven to exhibit antimicrobial properties like milk and honey. But they also include mud, excrement, and my personal favorite, frogs boiled in oil. Over the centuries, different doctors and scientists advocated for different approaches to burn care. Topical treatments using ingredients like honey, fats and oils, alcohol, and wine seem to be the most common recorded approaches. But other treatments like bloodletting were also noted. Arguably worse even than applying feces to burns, the late Middle Ages and Renaissance time periods saw arguments made for treating burns with fire or other scorching hot objects. These treatments, advocates noted, seemed to lessen the pain. Perhaps what was really happening was those with less severe burns were then given burns so severe that their nerves were damaged, leading to a loss of feeling pain. It wasn't until the late 18th century that the idea of cooling a burn as the first treatment method became widely encouraged. (sighs) Cold water alone should be applied to bathe the parts, celebrated British surgeon Sir James Earl wrote in an essay published in 1799. This, being found to give ease, was continually renewed, and the patient during several days drank nothing but cold water and took very little nourishment. By these means, he was kept in a cool and tolerably easy state. Today, the application of cool, but not very cold, water is still universally accepted as the best form of first aid for burns. If the skin is broken, topical ointments containing silver or other antimicrobials and gauze dressings are often used. The most severe cases may require skin grafts, which are surgeries involving the transplantation of skin from one area of the body to another. IV antibiotics may be used throughout care to prevent infection. So how did we get here? Well, the vast majority of advancements in burn treatment have come in just the past 100 years or so, spurred by World War II and major fires. One of those fires was the Coconut Grove Fire in Boston in 1942. Most victims of the nightclub blaze were treated at Boston City Hospital, while others went to Massachusetts General Hospital. At BCH, burn patients were treated with the so-called tanning process. Introduced in the 20s, it involved the application of tannic acid to create a leathery scab over the wound, protecting against bacterial infection. The problem with this process, however, was that it was incredibly painful and in some cases resulted in severe liver damage. At MGH, however, doctors used a new method, applying soft gauze with petroleum jelly and boric acid ointment. One month later, about a third of the patients at BCH had died. None had died at MGH. Many of the Coconut Grove fire victims were also treated successfully with antibiotics, including the then brand new penicillin. These pioneering methods and outcomes helped shape burn treatment for the remainder of the 20th century and beyond. Even now, burn treatment is evolving. In 2017, for example, doctors in Brazil made headlines for treating burn patients there with tilapia skin. Research showed the treatment was quite effective. Healing the physical damage inflicted by burns is just one part of a complicated puzzle when it comes to burn care. Many times, burn survivors require emotional care and support throughout their difficult journeys. If you'd like to learn more about supporting the burn community, the Phoenix Society for Burn Survivors is a great place to start. NFPA has collaborated with the Phoenix Society many times in the past, 
and a link to their website is included in the description of this video. Thanks for watching. If you like these Learn Something New videos, please let us know by leaving us a positive comment, liking them, and sharing them with your friends and colleagues. As always, subscribe to NFPA's YouTube channel for more content like this.